All right, I've hit the button. Now, you got your flame suit on because I've got mine on. Has everyone else in the chat got their flame suits on? Oh, dear. Here we go. Yes, yes. Who's who's ready for a, who's ready for a fight? Rock them, sock them. Yeah. <laughs> so today we're talking about ham radio contest. Ham radio contesting. It's been a big week for contesting, and I don't think there's been any contests that have really been run in the last week. It's probably been the biggest... Biggest discussion about ham radio contests in the last week that there ever has been. And I'm referring to uh, Kyle. Kyle, uh, welcome. Kyle, thank you for joining Hello. me. Um, we're going to be talking about a few things. Um, change in amateur radio is going to be the number one thing I think is going to be the biggest discussion. Um, but also what's been happening? What's all the, what's all the, what's all the fuss about? What's, been, the hubbub. what's gone on? Well, do you want me to summarize here? Uh, yeah. Sure. So I guess nine, nine days ago, nine days ago, I went on W1DED, his uh, YouTube channel, and I had been vocal before Sterling and I in Zero SSC, who lives here in St. Louis. We Actually, we're getting together here in about an hour and a half, and we're going to go talk about ham radio. But Sterling and I have had talked many times and uh, had... You know, we talk about the future of radio, the future of contesting, and how to get younger people, younger people under the age of 50, right? I mean, we're not, we're not talking about, um, you know, the, the, the older generation. We're talking about the new generation that hangs on on Discord and doesn't really care about what's going on on the QRZ forums, and we'll get to that, and on Reflectors and the groups I.O. They're all hanging out on Discord, and they're, they're meeting online and doing these cool things. And we've had some, you know, pretty, we have some conventional ideas to, to um, further ham radio and contests, but then we've also got these far-fetched ideas that are probably 20 years in the making, maybe even 30 or 40 years in the making. And I had voiced my opinion about these, these things, and I guess Kevin had seen an interview, and he goes, hey, come on the channel and talk about these, these concepts. So I did. I went on Kevin's channel and talked about these concepts and talked about some far-fetched things that we could do to improve amateur radio, especially contesting with technology and make it more appealing. We're still putting RF in the air, right? We're still getting on the radio and we're still making contacts, but using technology to help harbor and make this a more fun hobby to, to excite the younger people. And I went on there and rapped for an hour or so, and Kevin cut it down to 15 minutes and, you know, took all my ums and the ohs and um, e's out and put it out on the web. And then it exploded. So mm. it, like, it woke all the SKs up, the silent keys up from the, the contesting uh, uh, cackles, <laughs> and all of them rose up from the dead like Ghostbusters, and all of them are attacking me on any type of platform that you can get, you can you can put a, key, a keyboard in front of, right? All of those keyboard commandos. I mean, and again, we'll maybe we'll bring up the the QRZ forums. The main flame war is on QRZ, and I mean, I, I don't know. Surprise, how many names, surprise. Yeah, I don't know how many names I've been called. I don't know how many um, um, attacks, personal attacks. I'm a, I, I'm waiting for somebody to 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 ring my doorbell upstairs, you know, with uh, with the guillotine and have my head you know they were like literally like wait till that guy shows up at contest university this year we're gonna have some words i'm just like oh crap you know but <laughs> well, i'm not afraid go ahead well see i'm glad that you brought that up because i was with you yesterday uh, yesterday last year at contest university and um when we went along there was a bit of discussion around about changing what like what was going to change in contests? What what are we going to change in contests? I think was you you were talking to a few people last year, and I was sort I was sort of around you at the time, and there was some I think there was some key people that you were talking to. I don't really know them all. K nine CT like, and some other people were there, and we were having yeah. some discussions. Yes, and and they seemed you know pretty keen. They wanted to hear what some of the ideas were and what was happening. But the overall feel, at least when I went to contest university for the first time, was like. This is what we're doing. This is what we've done. This is how you contest. And it was like, oh, is that it? There's no innovation here. There's nothing. What's new? Can you show me what's what? What? What are we going to do in five years' time? What are we doing in ten years' time? 
with content? Is it just going to be the same? Are we yeah. going to change? Or are we just going to keep doing the same thing over and over? And the thing that I spoke to you about doing this stream, because I know that you've done, you did the video with W1DED and you've done, I think you did a live stream. You did a React live stream with Sterling the other day on your own channel as well. Uh, we've got similar problems with our content. Our contest here in our country is a little bit different to yours. Ours are more, our field days are more contests. Um, and for the last couple of years, there's been delays in getting the results out. It's been, I think one contest is up to two years now. We haven't oh. heard, we haven't got any results. Now that's, that's all well and good. And people be like, oh, just be patient. But the problem is, <laughs> the problem is that eventually what happens is people lose interest. They're like, yeah. well, if the results are not going to come out, what's the point? The other problem that we also have is that it's always, well, not always, sorry, I should not say that. It's the big guns. When I say big guns, the ones that have huge stations, lots of power, good locations that always seem to put up the big scores. So what happens is if you come in as a new contester, a newbie contester, and you've never done it before, and you rack up, you know, like 20 points or something like that, and old mate down the road's got 2,000, Right. then you don't really stand much of a chance. So right. I think that there needs to be some tweaking of the rules, different subsections, different subcategories to get people more interested and more involved. Um, there's also other things where, you know, you could compete in real time. And I've spoken about real-time contesting with you. I think we need to go towards real-time contesting. We need live scoreboards and things like that. You could be comp I, like I could be I could be contesting and I could be competing and I can look at the real time scoreboard. I can see you, Kyle. You're in front of me by by 15 points. Right. Okay, okay. There's only there's only five minutes left in the contest. I need to try and find a station that's going to get me that multiplier yep. and try and and try and beat you. There's no point in me trying to make contact. You know, calling CQ and hoping for someone to come back. You know, it it adds all sorts of strategy and everything into it. So. We Right. We could totally take technology, right? We could write programs or we could make this a cloud-based thing where, for example, you brought up big stations um, are competing against smaller stations. And in the bigger contests, there are different overlays where like, you know, TB wires and, and this and that. But geographically, that does not come into play because if I have a dipole and I'm sitting in Maine, and I have a dipole and I'm sitting in Missouri, guess what? I'm going to hit in, it's an international contest. I'm going to hear Europe a lot easier than, than in Maine than I am in Missouri. Right? So mm. why don't we have like one thing that I'm proposing is, okay, let's have WPX uh, or CQ worldwide or all of these international contests and let's keep them 48 hours. That's fine. Um, but why don't we have the technology where I can drop into a contest that I say I have two hours that I can contest, right? And I have a dipole and a 100-watt radio, and I live in the Midwest, and I can go on the cloud. I can, I can sign up and say, here's my station. Here's the things that I have, and I'm going to compete against other people in the Midwest with my similar station. And we're all handicapped against one another, or we're, we're playing against one another for the next two hours. Or maybe maybe it's 20 minutes, and then it's a ladder system where you crown a champion after two hours or something like that. You know, those are the types of technology advances that we can do to make it more fun instead of, oh, Seeker Worldwide's this weekend, and if I'm going to put up a big score, i got to work 36 of the 48 hours. Oh, my gosh, and i got this birthday party, and i got that, and i got this. That's no fun. No, and we have that too. And let us know in the chat too what you think of this discussion. I've noticed that not a lot of people have been typing in the chat. They must be listening to us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what's your what's your opinion of some of these ideas that we're throwing out? Um, should we just leave it all the same and just have the same, you know, don't change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of thing. Or should we be looking to be a little bit more in it, in an innovative? I can't say that word. Innovative. Innovative. Um, show initiative. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well that's right. Um, we have here we have usually twenty four hour contests, but they have a six hour 
uh, section, a six or an eight hour section. But even six or eight hours That's is still a long time That's still to dedicate. Long. Yeah. Yeah. So what we have is we find that some of us who a, a lot of our contests are, are portable contests as well. So our VHF, UHF field days and um, a couple of others. So we go out portable. It's a long time to spend six to eight hours out in the field, which is fine. Some people do dedicate, you know, a whole day to do that. But the problem is, is that we work stations and we'll have, maybe we'll have a station come up and they'll only spend like 15, 20 minutes in the contest or half an hour in the contest. Yeah. And they'll give out some, they'll give out some numbers, they'll give out some exchanges. And then what happens is uh, they disappear and a majority of them don't even bother putting in a log. And then if they don't bother putting in a log, then there's no record to say that we actually made that contact. And then the station that's gone out eight hours ago and has been out there all day doesn't get credited for those points because it just looks like there's only one log that actually says that someone's actually made that contact. The other thing that you've been proposing too is, is that, well, not you, sorry. I'll back myself up on that. The other thing that a bunch of us and those in the radio sport community have been um saying is is that with this real-time cross-checking of logs then um if it's it'll be a lot easier because if someone only come up for 15 minutes they know oh okay rather than me having to submit my log later let me just bring it up i'll type in the contact as i make it type in the contact press enter that's all i have to do yeah i've already automatically submitted it it's all gone in i don't have to do anything else yeah and i think that that would make people a lot um the participation rates would go up a lot more and there would be uh, a lot more people that could just jump on for half an hour or an hour in a contest. Well, and uh, so it it is going to, you know, back in the day, whenever everyone was writing their contacts on quill and, and parchment, right? You know, and they sent them by <laughs> Pony Express, right? And then they checked them that way. And then email came along, right? And we were able to submit electronic copy or uh, uh, submissions and N1MM and F3, uh, uh, into, uh, 3FJP and all these, these programs were able to do them electronically. And it, it was, you know, granted I was not contesting at the time. I had my ticket, but I wasn't contesting. I hear that it was like the end of the world, right? Oh my God, this is going to ruin contesting. And we all submitted these Cabrillo files, Cabrillo uh, became a standard and we all decided, okay, we're all going to submit these uh, contest records as Cabrillo files. It's the next version of, of scoring, of we need to get the loggers, we need to get the N1MMs, we need to get the N3FJPs, we need to get the, um, uh, the, D the DX logger and all of these big loggers on board to say, how are we going to implement real-time scoring where you hit the enter button and then it goes up and validates it. But you know, you might be able to edit and granted the, the contest rules say, after the contest is done, you cannot edit your log. The, the, the log is, is sacred, right? So, and there's a ton Which, of people that I know yeah. that they go in afterwards and edit the log. Um, but the rules basically say, if the if the contest is over at 6 p.m. on Sunday, then you should submit your log, and you're done. But you can edit the log all the way up to six o'clock. But then after you're done, after the contest is done, the log is submitted. The log is final. Yeah. So, just going through a couple of um, comments, which we will in a sec. Just on, on that point about the log being final. That's part of contesting. Right. So if you get a call, if you get a call wrong or you get a signal report wrong or an exchange wrong, that's part of the contest. It's right. part of th – that's part of it. You can't go, oh, I might just um, contact such and such and just get them to check their log and what right. their exchange was to me. And it's like, no, you can't do that. Well, and, and, and somebody also <laughs> uh, you know, made the comment, well, I write it down and I go back. Well, you're – the, the way that you're supposed to do that is if you got a call wrong and you jot it down on a piece of paper, you need to fix it before the end of the contest, right? Mm. Whenever you're calling CQ and nobody's answering you for three minutes, go and fix your log. <laughs> I will hook Hattie Screw up a 5 9 exchange. <laughs> what, well, see, said that? <laughs> Iowa Hawk. Um, um, well, see, a lot of people, uh, you know, even that, you know, you could, you could, you could do uh, with. Um, uh, moving to like an online cloud-based system where you actually start to put in um, 
uh, ex, uh, you know, things in real time, right. you could have randomly generated, ex, you know, serials that you have to um, that you have to um, pass over the air and all sorts of um, exchanges to cross reference and cross check. A um, couple of comments here. So Joe says, honestly, I like to contest. I care less about my score. Yeah, that's good. That's great. I think that's that's a great um, I, way to contest. I I, I agree. You know, I, I I I totally agree with that. I mean, I entered those big contests. Mostly, it's multi-op. But I, I the cool thing about contesting is you can make it your own. And Randy said this in the rebuttal from W one uh, DED is you can make it your own. You can you can contest for a couple of hours and try and beat your score. You can get together with your friends and figure out, you know, you're going to form this contest within a contest. And, and whatever the rules are that you set, as long as you're on the air and making contacts. And, you know, I would I would highly encourage you, if you're going to enter a contest, please submit a log. You know, even if it is a log that you don't care about, other people might care about it too. It's like Capota. If you go out and do a an activation, you know, even if you get four contacts, go ahead and submit that log because those those chasers need those points for that activation. Yep. Yeah, that's what Aaron says. I contest submit a log, but I do it more to supply people with multipliers. Yeah, I don't expect go. to win. Well, what and what do you? What's what's uh, what's more fun having contesting by yourself or contesting with a bunch of friends? Oh, it's, the multi ops are, are where to go. I mean, yeah, and. Here's the issue. I mean, I have a ton of fun with multi-ops because one, you're on the air for a couple of hours, three or four hours, maybe even less, and depends on how big the multi-op is. And you're the camaraderie, and you know, with we have this contest dashboard down at the station, and we're trying to beat each other. You know, it's like a contest within a contest. But one, there's not a lot of pressure, right? Because you know that in a couple of hours you're going to release the seat to somebody else. And someone else is going to take your spot, so you 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 already have in your mind that you don't have to sit in that that seat for the next twelve hours. But mm. um, also, um, I forgot the point number two, the camaraderie. Um, but uh, it's it's just it's a fun time. Oh, I, I know. The second point was that there's this notion about oh well, all of the big stations they're they're wanting people to come down and and do multi ops and just call them up and you know they'll invite you down to to contest that is not what's going on in at least America like if i literally if I called up k three l r and said i'm coming over and i'm going to work c q worldwide he's going to go, "Who are you no don't show up please <laughs> don't. That, but please do, do do not show up to my place you know well this is this is the point that michael's making too being fairly new ham um delayed getting on hf because all the contesting is overwhelming and confusing if that's sort of what you're interested in you want to know more about it um yeah you need to, there's there's the the club station the multi-op the smaller the smaller stations to to assist in in helping to get started yeah um but yeah that's that's right um it, it it's it's the same attitude of Whenever you go to your, you're a new general or a new tech, and you go to your local club and you sit in the back <laughs> because you don't know anybody and nobody says hello to you, and then you walk out of that club, meaning, well, that was a total waste of time. Yeah, well, it's, that, it's I mean, the that's the same thing. That that's an entirely different discussion that we could have, yeah. uh, and that's that's one thing that we've been trying to improve on in our club, um, and I. I don't. I, I I think that we're doing a a reasonably good job. We've had a lot of newcomers into our hobby. I reckon if we go uh, into our hobby, into our club, I reckon if I have a look around our club rooms on a typical Wednesday night when we meet, we have at least five, six, seven new younger faces that have come to the club since, and not not just new younger faces, but just new faces in general, which is good. And we've been trying really hard that those people who have come along to the, for the first time that we are there to you know say hey guess what you know you belong here um, yeah. what do you want to what do you want to know about so I and mean I think you know, that um, everyone needs to do that yeah I encourage if you're gonna go to contest University this year and if w there's anybody in the chat that you know is <laughs> they're gonna have they're gonna have placards we we <laughs> <laughs> Contest against Kyle. We hate Kyle. We hate Kyle. Well, after I walk in to contest you with my body armor and you take a few punches <laughs> at me, um, 
if you see a younger person in Contest University that you haven't seen their call sign on the the sc online scoreboard, or you know that that person is a is a big multi op person, or you you know you know them in the Contest University, reach out and say hello, and you know ask them if they have any questions. Like be a, exchange uh emails be a mentor like you know we just don't have that in the contest community where you know the people sit in the back and they just kind of sit there and they go through the slides and nobody says hello no one says hey you're a, are you a new contester yeah first time here at contest university oh cool tell me what your favorite contest is tell me what you it frustrates you ab about contesting and ask them get them involved because you know them just sitting <clears throat> in the back and not talking to to uh to anybody that's <coughs> It's boring. It's uh, it's frustrating. Mm. It's humiliating. Ben does make a point <clears throat> saying about cloud base would require the internet, which for the most part would be okay. It may not be feasible for field day type if you don't have um, good uh, or any internet, which is definitely a problem yeah. here. Um, and this is this is the whole point with the discussion is is that we're not saying about taking away some things and going well. This has to be only cloud based, right? Right. And it's like there's a lot that you can put on the internet to do all of the back end stuff, but you don't necessarily have to live score. You can still do your normal routine of your normal logging, your normal scoring and all that sort of thing. But then once you get back, once you submit it, it just does the exact same process as if it was live scoring. Yeah. And yeah. And Aaron's got a uh, cloud base is fine, but here at VE land, we like to go out on the bush on a mountain and set up a contest. No interest. Yeah. So. Aaron, per perfect example. This type of technology is not for you, right? You can go out and do your classic contest and do whatever you want to do. It's an enhancement. It's an overlay that I'm saying that we're going to use the contacts of the contest you are participating in, but we are going to do something else with those contacts. So, yeah, you can. I'm not saying that we change the contest. I mean, it's like off with Kyle's head because he's going to change. Uh, CQ Worldwide or WPX or uh, AIRU because, you know, he wants to stream and he wants to do all the... No, I, I'm not proposing that we do anything with the existing contest. You can have your contest. Ha and I, I'm going to participate too and I'm going to submit a log. But why can't we have a piece of technology that enhances that and makes it more appealing to young people and makes it more of a game um, in real time? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Terrence says, I absolutely hate contests. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> every, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And sometimes when you do go on the bands, uh, like it's it's funny how active the bands become in contests. Like all of a sudden, like 10 meters opens up and you're like, I didn't even realize there's like 50 million stations across the waterfall yeah. on, on 10 meters. But none of them want to just have a rag chew or, or a QSO because they're all contesting. I can imagine the frustration. But I mean... You know, at the same point, I also don't like listening to medical conversations on 80 metres as well. So, <laughs> you know, each to their own, I suppose. Um, now, there was a couple of comments that I'll just get through quickly. Michael says, moving the scoring database from PC in the field to the cloud with real-time scoring makes sense. The one used here in VK lost its author. Um, sadly, uh, the author of a popular logging program here uh, became silent key a couple of years ago so something new is overdue so here at least we have a big opportunity um, to develop something because uh, some people use n1mm but someone developed a, a bit of background someone developed an application specifically for almost all of the vk contests um, in one one um, and you've you've seen me using it on yeah, my live streams uh, before yeah the one that you do the 24-hour live stream right yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we definitely have a, an opportunity. And sort of leading into that, let's say we're like, cool, let's do it. Let's do something. Let's get going. What's what's the hold up? What do we need? Because Joey says, if we go to live cloud logging, any ideas how to help fund the operational costs? What do we need? We got the tech. How do we keep it regularly funded? Who's going to develop it? Yep. So my thought is we need somebody that is smarter than I am and has more time to put together a grassroots effort, right? And then what we do is we write a grant to ARDC. This is right up ARDC's alley, right? Someone writes a grant that is smarter than I, that has grant 
writing ability and says, these are the things that we need. We need servers, we need programmers. We have, this is the, the preliminary interface that we're thinking about putting together and we need $2 million from the ARDC and it's gonna take five years to develop. And then the ARDC gives us $300,000 to start out with. And then we buy some servers and we get some, some developers and some programmers and we get all this stuff together. And then the ARDC says, hey, this is pretty cool. Here's another 600 or here's another $700,000. Go forth and conquer. And that's how it gets started. And you know, some of the, the, the comments on you know, some of the social media is like, oh, well, Kyle, you know, or on the radio sports, the Discord, um, and maybe we should put the, the radio sports uh, Discord. I just did, yeah. Okay, down. Yep. And uh, oh, Kyle, our leader, I am not your leader. I am, I am not your leader. I am just throwing out crazy ideas. Somebody else needs to do this grassroots effort from the ground up and start this process because I am not the person to, to, to do this. Mm. I'm just throwing out <clears throat> ideas. Yeah, um, I'm no coder. I'm no, uh, I don't know about you. I'm no coder. Oh, I'm, I'm no developer. Either. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. I don't even know same. how to spell code. And so that's the good thing is what's been happening in the last week is, is that at the very least, even though a lot of it has drawn out the, um, the uh, what do I want to say? The real, I, I know what I want to say, the real shits of the, of the ham radio community basically <laughs> on QRZ. Um, it has drawn them out, but at least it's got the discussion happening and people are like, yeah, yeah, maybe we should change some things or maybe we shouldn't, Yeah, you know. I mean, what do, what do we want to do? Yeah. I mean, the, the QRZ, that's a dumpster fire, right? You're, you're going to bring out all the haters and whatnot. But I have, um, I have gotten, I've probably gotten 150 emails and probably maybe 50 or 60 Discord IMs um, from people who have said, this is right on. Like, you know, I, I understand that some of my ideas are far-fetched, but literally, like, th this is what we need. This is what... You know, the future holds the the future of contesting and the future of getting younger people involved is some of these ideas being implemented. But the problem is we need somebody to implement them. We need grassroots people. We need people to do the things that uh, I'm talking about and actually put them to fruition, you know. So my, Michael's saying here about the offline version for non-internet served areas, um, automate the upload when the user returns to civilization. So... At the moment, when someone submits their log, it's usually manually cross-checked, right? Or they might run it into some sort of yeah, random program that they might have to do validation. We're talking about doing all of the validation and cross-checking in real time. Or when you get back and you submit your log, it's done. That's it. Yeah. And basically, all of the contest manager needs to do is look at the results and publish them. Well, And, and I, I love whenever like... You know, uh, these, uh, granted, they have more experience than I have. They've been contesting for like 50 years, right? And they go, well, CQ Worldwide, all of the raw scores are done within seven days. Seven days is not instant gratification. Like, I'm talking <laughs> literally whenever the contest is over, within a minute, you know exact the, 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 the rules are, 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 I'm sorry, the, the results are final, right? I, I can't think of any other sport and maybe the chat can help me that we have to like literally wait to see how we did. Like, you know, basketball, <laughs> you know football, what? any other sport, it's final. It's not like, okay, the Cardinals <laughs> were playing the San Diego Padres and, you know, the Cardinals <laughs> won, but we need to go back and check the record for a couple of days to make sure that, you know, all the runs were actually, everyone touched home plate, you know? You know, you know it would be, uh, you know, it, it's, it feels more like a, a, an election than anything else because you don't find the <laughs> true result out for a few days. Do we, do we need a January 6th? <laughs> I think we need. I think we need to do a. Uh, we need, we need to say contests are like an election. Is, you never is, get is the Dominion, results. Is Dominion vote, voting going <laughs> to do real time? Story? Well, it's the same, isn't it? You you, 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 you go up against the big guns in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't get oh, me started. The ham radio elections. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> Joe does have a point though. Innovation is needed, but is scary to people who've been doing things for a long time. Oh yeah, I mean, and they've been doing those these things for ninety years, right? I but, mean, but the thing the thing is, is what happens in 
5, 10, 15, 20 years' time? Are people just going to get sick and tired of it? Are they sick and tired of it now? Or are we just going, always going to have contests and we're always going to have people doing it? Yeah, yeah. What, what is going to happen? I mean, I, I see, I don't know about VK land, but over here in, in the U.S., we have clubs that within 10 to 15 years, that club is not going to be around anymore because no young people are members and all of the members are in their their 80s, right? And the, the club is going to fold. What is contesting going to look like? If you go to Contest University, Hayden, you were over there yesterday. What, what do you think <laughs> the median age was for the 350 people that went to Contest University? Oh... Uh... 55 and that's probably generous oh yeah gener oh my god no, i was thinking like <laughs> 65 or 70 <laughs> well no well it was 55 in my mind because i was hanging out with all the young people so <laughs> i mean so there is uh, uh there is younger and, and, people and, and that go just, there and, ju and just quickly the thing that really really frustrated me and made me angry was there was a Presentation, I need to get my Contest U book out and you might be able to remind me of what it was. There was a forum that we went to which was, who was it? The uh, There was a young person that was um, presenting about their um, about their, uh, their contesting or what they were doing with contesting. There was like 10 people in the room. Yeah, that, and, was, the, that was the youth contesting, yeah. Yeah, and it was like... Every, and. There were other forums going on at the time, but I think we chose that as the first one. Yeah. And I I hope I didn't find out whether there was more people that went to that forum over the course of the day, but it just se seemed like it was really good. It was a really good presentation and everything was, was great and it was just like, oh, okay, so this is what people think about the future of contesting and right. people in it. Yeah. So, okay. So if and you know what's even worse is like you go to the big ham fest and you go to the youth forums any of the youth forums and there's like you know you you go to a a, a forum about um you know the best ham operators or um uh you know the whatever the the flavor of the week node red right i mean i had standing room only at hamcation whenever <coughs> i did my presentation there was probably 50 people in that room and then the youth forum was right after mine. And you know how many people stayed for the youth forum? I bet you there was probably only 10 people in that forum. You know? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, or, another and, comment which... Sorry. And, and, and yeah, another go. thing that I, I wanted to break up is some of these people, they're just like, well, we talk to old people. Or old people. <laughs> now you got me started. We <laughs> talk to young people. We, we know... Kyle, your your ideas are not uh, common among the the younger people, and I'm like, w what young people are you talking to? And they're like, well, you know, the 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 eight year old that comes to our our uh, club meeting because uh, you know the his her grandpa is in the. And I'm like, that's not the person I'm talking about. Well, you know, w I, I talked to him on the uh, the groups I O the reflector. I'm like, they're not hanging out on the reflector. And you say, are you on Discord? And they're like, what's Discord? And I'm like, never mind. I'm like, y you think you're talking to the people of are you, you think you're getting the the vibe and the info from the younger generation on you know contesting ham radio whatnot they're not even in the circles and they're not even trying to 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 seek out the circles to say hey let's actually talk to some people i think i'm talking to the right people but the, you you quiz them and you're just like you're not talking to the right people yep Joey, uh, which do you prefer more, live scoring, seeing how close I am to other operators or different categories, one-hour winners? The first can be done in tech. The second needs new categories. Clearly, we want both. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. the The thing is, is that I, I think that to get anything done, you kind of need to start fresh somewhere with a fresh contest or a fresh, you know, something or other to demonstrate that it can that you can make it work do you agree or do you yeah. have a think yeah, something because else or? if we if we start to tamper with the existing contests you're going to throw everyone up in arms right all of yep. the records all of uh the history all of this and all of that you're just going to make people angry and uh we saw that with kyle wants to stream all the contests and you know that's going to 
uh, degrade all the scores, and now everyone's self-spotting and yada yada. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's let's create a new contest, and let's let's have it on the weekend of WPX or NAQP or <coughs> or one of the big contest weekends, and let's make it a new contest, and we'll use the contacts from that contest and you can art you can submit a log to wpx contest sponsors go ahead and submit a, a log but let's sum, let's have another contest that is an overlay not even an overlay it's not even it's not even related it's a totally separate contest that you can submit your log in real time and we'll we'll do real-time adjudication and we'll do sprints and we'll do ladders and all of this other stuff in real time and we'll just we'll call it the you know i don't know We'll call it the, this is crazy, we're doing this in a uh, real-time contest, and we're just using the contacts from who's on the air. Mm. Well, and we can also, we can, <clears throat> we can also in that uh, contest that we come up, just, just be like, okay, self-spotting, sure, go for yeah. it. Uh, streaming, sure, go for it. Um, it's, and if it's you're like, not, and, it's and like if you do it. It's like a contest with two rules. Make contacts yeah. and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the problem is, is the have fun rule is usually the one that's missed out on normal contests. I think yeah, is it's just, but not not. I mean, that's not everyone's attitude. But yeah, the the um, the whole self spotting thing. It's one of those uh, things where I could see some people are saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do it," and you know, you're gonna you know tip the balances, and people are gonna be trying to work you and all this. And it's like. Well, why not? You want to encourage activity, don't you? You want to encourage, like, is, is it just all about the scores? Because we're not, I don't know if you've got this um, saying over there, but we call, we say we're not playing for sheep stations. It's not like, it's not like you, you <laughs> I don't know it's what not, that means. it means, it means you're not going to, you, you're not playing for like big rewards. It's not like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's not like you're going to, it's not like you're going to win a, a championship or something and you're going to get financial reward. Like right, no one gets right. that out of contests. So like why are we all worried? And, and people cheat anyway. So <laughs> what's, what's, what's the big problem? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, people, people cheat anyway. Um, I just want to go back. N6OIX, thank you for the $5 uh, super chat. Have you seen Kyle's Node Red apps? Damn, he's really good. We can make all this better. In actual fact, I need to talk to you about Node Red because I think we want to have a uh, presentation from you for an event that we've got coming up in November. So if you're free, yep. I'd like to have you on for Node Red. So because I've got no idea, I, I I know it, I know it's cool, but I got no idea about it, and I want to learn it. So let's book it. Um, yeah. So um, here's another one. I only have a contest to have fun. Scores are always an afterthought. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Norm, I feel like that's going to be a trivia uh, question coming up now for us in, <laughs> in, in, in an upcoming trivia. Um, Self-spotting is allowed in many contests. Many people have not read the rules in several years. Yes, yeah, yeah. common mis common misconceptions and and just assuming that you can't do it. Um, uh, uh, issues. Um, and Colin, uh, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Um, appreciate that. Now, let's uh, let's just briefly show what caused all of the the chaos. Um, I don't want to dwell too long on this because I think that I I don't like giving them airtime, but I think that it's important in the context of the uh, in the context of the the discussion, and that's this place. Now, I would not recommend. I, I I do not recommend anyone use the QRZ forums anymore because they are not they are not they are not uh, uh, um, what do you call it moderated. They're, <laughs> they're not. They're not civil. <laughs> they're not civil, um, and people just act like absolute morons. And there's two there's two or three in particular, and I blocked them on QRZ forums, and I don't post there anymore because yeah. they are just. It's the exact same thing with these guys. It's like you make a suggestion about something and they just uh, – it's like it's the end of the world and it's just like, okay, uh, you must be real fun to hang out with. Like can you imagine <laughs> going and speaking to someone and they're just – they're just – oh, I don't want to do – it's just that all day. Like I don't know. It is, uh, it is Debbie Downer over there. I mean if – 
if you so I don't know if there's uh, a long time ago there used to be a radio show here in America. It was called Love Line, and I don't know if it's over there, but it was basically two guys who took calls from people, and they would people would call in about their problems, and then they would try and solve their problems. And some of them were like really serious problems. You would call, <clears throat> you would listen to Love Line, and you would be like, and they're about they're about relationship status, and you you listen to Love Line and be like. You know what? I'm not so screwed up. There are way screwier people. I I think of QRZ forums like that. I go and read the forums are just like, I think I'm pretty normal. Like, <laughs> you know, there are some huge behavioral issues going on in the QRZ forums. <laughs> yep. Uh, Michael's talking about my camera autofocus just quickly. Yeah, sorry. I've, I'm testing a new product and it's it's messing up my autofocus. So I can't change it at the moment. But um, yeah, someone said uh, QZ forums, the Reddit of ham radio. Um, <laughs> That's true. I think actually, Reddit's the, actually probably more civil. It's the 4chan, but it, there's call signs involved. Yeah. <laughs> so this goes on for we're up to 22 pages now. Oh my god. So um, you should we're not, you should get to to the ones like in the middle where they're calling me a clown. Well, this is the thing. Like I would class that as. Uh, See, and here's someone saying he was not called a clown here. That's absolute um, load of crap. Um, and the thing is that, um, you know, that's a personal attack, to be quite right. honest. Yeah. And it's like, like these are all, and then other people are going at other one, everyone else, and you know, it's just it. It would it would be it would be funny to watch. I'd just laugh at these people. You know, it's, um, it's it's one thing to attack the the <laughs> the topic. <laughs> it's one thing to attack the topic and say, "Hey, Kyle made this point. Here is my counterpoint," and be civil about it. But then, whenever they start into this flame war and they start like making it personal <clears throat> and whatnot, I mean, that's whenever that's not cool. You know, I, literally, like th this is where the crazy people in America they come and they knock on your door and say, "Hey." I've got an issue with what you said, and you're just like, "Why are you here?" You know, this is mm. this is not worth it. Mm. Now here we go. Here's the first Muppet. Oh, yeah, I know him. Ke zero GXN. He's a moron. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to say that because he's personally attacked me and other friends of mine. So, um, but yeah, uh, but there there were some people in here that uh, were sticking to the facts, and they were saying, "Well, you know, he didn't say that. He didn't, you know, and 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 I could see this, and but but rather than do this, how about let's do that?" And they were they were fine, but it's overwhelmed with just, um, you know, just people just ranting basically. So I mean, you know what's great about this is I'm sure that. I mean, you take a look at my subscriber count on my channel, and it's gone through the roof in the last couple of days because people, you know, now um, have have seeked me out on YouTube, you know, and they're just like, "Oh, I'm gonna subscribe to this," you know, more. It's 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 had the dis on. it's had the dis it's had the effect of. Uh, here we go. Here's the second moron. Um, WN1MB. He's another one. Oh so yeah, will, yeah, 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 yeah. He will. Uh, and and I'm. And by the way, this is all public. I'm not logged in. By the way, you can view all of these. I'm I'm logged in on the forums. So, but yeah, those two in particular, and a couple of others. Um, personal attacks. So there you go. Have a couple back at you. Um, but, um, but yeah, the what what's the saying? Um, no publicity. Uh, was it? Any publicity is good. good no, publicity. no, no yeah. such, such thing as bad publicity. Oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, I have. Um, it is what it is, right? Um, I didn't put the post up there. Uh, I was very surprised. So whenever I saw it up there, and I have kind of just rolled with the punches. I thought about piping in there on just like a one. You know, yes, last night actually I was, I was having a bit of. Uh, of uh, some beers last night with friends and and i was like you know what i'm just gonna go into the qrz forums on my on my phone and be like hey what's going on and just pop in but i'm just like you know what i'm not even gonna let them let them let <laughs> nah. them flame more all, all they want i really don't care yeah yeah so uh but yeah i yeah don't uh don't don't don't, don't engage feed, them don't feed the, the beast <laughs> no no it's just it's just yeah i don't i don't go there anymore that's why i don't post any of my videos there anymore and i think a lot of people 
on the YouTube creators have stopped doing that because um, the same people and the people that we've already mentioned get in there and just go yeah. nuts. And it's like, fine, if you want to do that, then I can't be bothered doing this anymore. Right. Um, so... Um, so yeah, what what do we do? So we've got the we've got the radio sport Discord, um, and we've got the uh, ability for P, um, ARDC to to do some things. Um, what do we? Uh, where where else? Where else can we see some maybe some change? Maybe some change happening. Um, not um, not 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 trying to. <laughs> Not trying to say anything, but you know, <laughs> I, I will. Uh, okay, so the ARRL, um, they are, you know, they have had this uh, this CAC contest advisory committee, and it's represented by all of the districts. Some one uh, person is designated for the CAC. Mine is uh, Glenn Johnson. He lives up mm -hmm. in Iowa. And uh, he is my CAC representative, and it is headed by Canine CT Craig. And it seems like if you go to them, they will listen to your your ideas. And I think Craig, the chairman, he is very much um, agreeable to say, "Hey, that sounds like a good idea. We should we should take that to the ARL." And the and what has happened with the ARL is people. Uh, they can go and make uh, criticisms or you know suggestions on how the rules are changed and what rules need to be changed, and then the ARL votes on them and the rules get changed. I, I'm okay with that rule, and I'm okay on, on how that works. Um, and everyone has a voice, right? You can call your district manager and you can call your CAC representative and have a, dis a civil discussion, and they should be open to your ideas and not, you know, uh, bring your ideas down and say, that's a horrible idea. They should literally say, well, that's a good idea. Uh, I will take that, you know, in consideration. Or, hey, let's talk about this more. It, um, and I think that, you know, people are generally, I'm going to say the glasses is is uh, half full here and say, I hope that people are, are open to ideas after we've had th these whole discussions. But the, the, the thing that we can do on the grassroots um, uh, initiative is either create our own contests or the one thing that you can do is is uh, go to your state QSO party. That's where the, 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 the start uh, of your contest career is probably going to start is with a state QSO party here in the states. And Missouri QSO party was just last week and you can contact the Missouri QSO party people and uh, and submit your changes, and hopefully they are easily uh, influenced to change their rules quickly and swiftly to to incorporate some of these changes. Now, the bigger contests, obviously, they're going to take a long time, but I think that this grassroots effort has to either start with new contests or they have to start at the state level and start <clears throat> change there and then let that percolate up. Here's an interesting uh, comment from Joey, anything we can draw from Poda, their newer and modern approach to fun. Yeah. So exactly, I I might be off the mark here. I'm just going by things that I've heard. Now I won't go into it too much, but I believe that Poda, when it when it was um, in its inception, when it first started to before it became popular, that was a big thing where no one wanted to do what the Poda guys thought about doing. And there was a bit of a divide between the existing programs that were already in um, in place. And again, this is all I've heard. I'm just saying that this may or may not have happened. And they went off and they did their own thing anyway. And look what it's become. People, yeah. it, it's great. <clears throat> Poda is a perfect example of people starting a grassroots effort and look what it has become. I mean, Poda is awesome, and that interface is great. They're doing real time checking. <clears throat> I mean, the 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 things that they are doing is top notch, right? We should learn from the Poda people on how to to innovate and what contesting should look like <laughs> in the new world. We just lost ten viewers, so they must all hate Poda. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> 
<clears throat> but yeah, I mean, that's all, uh, you know, you can log in, you can see all of your stats, you've got all of, you can upload all of your logs, it's all into a central database, it's all there. So, um, and we're already kind of doing this sort of stuff. We're doing it with, you know, programs like um, WSJTX feeds, feeds into PSK Reporter and yeah. Whisper and anything that you can connect to the internet. And we're talking about even just logging programs, you know, logging programs can be interfaced to the internet easily. Equipment can be interfaced to the to the internet. Um, I know that you've had a big, you know, ideas with if every radio had a uh, uh, an Ethernet know, port on the back. Wouldn't it be so cool that we could like literally get SNR information about all the bands at all times, and uh, we're just piping all that information to the web, and then we're displaying it in real time. And uh, it becomes not only a, uh, a contest, but it becomes a spectator sport, right? With commentary. With, with real-time oh, commentary, yep. Look, Sterling's, uh, Sterling's shifted his beam uh, eastward. Oh, that's, that's not a good move. That's not, not a, a good, good move. move at all. No, Doesn't no. Sterling he know must be... that there's, a, yeah, there's an opening to Europe that he is, he is not aware of right now? He must be. He he <laughs> must he must have moved his rotator while eating his Chick Fil A and forgotten about it. So, <laughs> I mean, there is. So, I mean, we <clears throat> here in America, we we do real time commentary about golf, right? Oh, Tiger's <laughs> on sixteen. All right, the, that tee shot. Oh, you just put it in the bunker. That's going to be a hard second shot for him. <laughs> let's go to the, Let's go to fourteen and see uh, who's putting over there. I mean, and now that, word from our sponsors. Yeah, th- I mean, <laughs> look how boring that is. I mean, we could literally make contesting this real time, a uh, very fast paced, awesome comment uh, commentary sport where people are just like. Oh my God! That guy just contacted Russia, and and now the band has flattened out, and now now uh, Hawaii has come across, and you know now he's got a pile up, and you know all of these really cool things we could do in real time, but we need somebody to program it. We could uh, we we could do live crosses to uh, to on the ground uh, contest stations. Yeah. So uh, what's your strategy today? A bit like uh, Formula One, you know, go exactly. around all the garages. Right, exactly. I mean, they're on break, right? And, uh, you know, the multi-ops are some guys from the multi-op is taking a break. And then you do an interview, you do a live interview and be like, hey, you just got off running, you know, uh, 120 an hour for the last two hours. How's the bands? What uh, what, what do you think is going to make you uh, uh, win this contest? You know, you're you're 2,000 points behind and uh, things are not looking good for you because you got an hour left. What what do you need to do to, to, to get this uh, this pace going? And, you know... <laughs> Have uh, have the LeBron James, Joey. yeah, have the LeBron <laughs> James of uh, well, you know, uh, coach was in there uh, giving us some tips. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's endless. You, you've upset Joey. Golf was a step too far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric uh, Eric says uh, you have good ideas, but you're asking other people to put in all the work. But th- this is this is the problem. It's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I, I think I think I think this is the this is. Uh, uh, there's, Don't there's you two, work for somebody? The, there's, there's two. There's two points to this. To this comment is that um, other people, when you are, when you do ask other people to do work, they are very hesitant about doing it. Right. Because uh, unless they have the same vision and the same goals and the same, yeah, you know, let's do it. That that sounds good. If you get people that are like, yeah. Nah, I, you know, eh, it's not going to go anywhere. Then you're never going to get anywhere. Those, those are the people that that are not, uh, you know. Okay, perfect example. Jason had this vision for Poda, right? And he had this idea. And now, how many how many people does works on the Poda database and all this other stuff? Tons, right? I don't know how many. Maybe 12, 15, 20. I don't know how much, but you you have to have people to do the work and people are willing people have more clock cycles than i do to do the work there are six and seven, skills and skill sets and skill set there's seven yeah. billion people on this planet there's some clock cycles for people to do some work so chris says yeah it only takes one person to get interested in to start an open source project right. and then all of a sudden it just goes exactly. um, off and i don't think not quite at that stage yet and that's what this whole discussion has been about and the discussion over the past week has been about is kickstarting something the the discord's there there's there's chatter there and someone just needs to get the ball rolling from 
the tech side of things, I think is probably the the main takeaway, would it be? That what? Sorry, I was reading the I was reading the chat. <laughs> I was just saying I was just saying so we've got the we've got like the Discord. We've got the Radio Sport Discord. Right, we've got right, all of right. these things. We've got all these ideas collected together, but what's the next step? Is the next step we just need someone with enough brain power and enough time to actually just start coding something. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. So there's a development channel in the Discord. And there's some good discussion. I mean, the, the first thing to do probably is to take all the UDP information that N1MM gathers and do some type of real-time scoreboard. Um, and I do. I, I have a scoreboard on Node-RED, but it's Node-RED. I mean, Node-RED is so limited on what it can do, and I haven't updated that in a while. Um, the, the, the cool thing is somebody has a vision. A perfect example is... The um, Sebastian just came out with a new logger. If you go to my channel, oh, take yeah. a look at um, the Poda Soda logger. Yeah, Poda logger yeah. Uh, Polo 2K. That yeah. thing is freaking awesome, right? So there was a need, and he had the clock cycles, and he went out and he coded a a new Poda and Soda and general logger that is is way better, I think, than Hammers, right? So. All it takes and is hammers one is good. Hammers, and hammers is, awesome. is still good, yeah. right? So all it takes is one person to say, "Hey, I have, I made this program. You can download it in Windows, and it's programmed in whatever the the latest and greatest is." Um, it takes everything from N1MM, and all you have to do is set up N1MM and send all the stuff from to my server, and it puts it pipes all this really cool information in real time and makes it uh, f- uh, you can follow it for all the people that are piping information to it. And then that gets put on a GitHub. People start coding. People are like, oh, this is really cool. I want to be a part of this really cool thing. I've got some coding skills. And then it becomes a thing. Well, look what happens with uh, what happened with WSJTX. That is all open source. And right. we then that branched off and we got JTDX and all the different flavors and variations. Chris says... Mentioned about FT8 Poda, uh, poke, Poda, FT8 Poker live scoring contest, but WSJTX has UDP reporting built in. So, and we had, well, we used to have the FT8 off as well. Yeah, it's it's you know, and that was an hour, and and you know, you could um, see what was happening in real time. So, um, <laughs> someone says fire chat I mean, up, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> The, the, the stuff that is going on with the frequency frenzy is awesome, right? I mean, that is that is some of the cool stuff that we can do in ham radio. Um, and we need to expand on, on top of that, right? I mean, he th- that is the, the type of grassroots stuff that, you know, and it's like whenever you have a club and you're trying to grow the club, I mean, th- a perfect example is a, f- long, a, a few years ago, there was the um, in, in, N1FL, N1FD, they won Club of the Year. And they grew from like five people to like 300 people within a couple of years. And the way that they did that was they were, they were throwing crap out there to see what stuck to bring in new members. This is exactly what we need. We need people to program stuff and stuff will stick stuff and stuff will go away and stuff will rise to the top. And the stuff that rises to the top will be the cream of the crop and we make it even better, right? So we have to have programmers to go out there and start throwing stuff out there to see what sticks and what gets traction. And then the best of the best will, will you know, they'll take an idea from here and take an idea from there and all that stuff will rise to the top and, and, um, you know, hopefully a couple of programs would be like, oh, we want, uh, you know, this program. I'm going to run it as a supplement, uh, you know, whenever I contest because it gives me real-time information and it's fun. And that's that's how these things work, you know. Yeah. But Frequency well, Frenzy is awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, I, I think that we've fixed all of the all of ham radio's issues today it's been fantastic uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, yeah geez. well you know hopefully we get to see something happen and something happens soon i know that um there have been some others who have been pretty vocal about getting um uh, you know and we didn't we didn't even touch on gamifying this you know yeah. that's 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 down the track 
yeah. you know, let's get the basics sorted first and then we can concentrate on that sort of stuff uh, a little bit later on. But uh, I want to um, I want to thank you, Kyle, for coming on and for discussing it. Thanks for uh, for being a bit of a an ambassador, not an ambassador, a spokesperson. No, not a spokesperson. A, a, uh, a doer. Child. Yeah. Um, good luck at Contest University. <laughs> <laughs> Someone mentioned earlier that that would be security for you. I won't be able to be there to uh, to help you this year. Not that I was any help last year. Um, I'm, but, I'm uh, sure we'll see I'm how sure, it goes. Uh, Contest University is going to be civil. I'm sure that there are going to be people that are point. You know, I'm sure that I'm going to stand in the back and people are going to. I'm going to see people pointing at me, which is you know <laughs> fine. Um, this is what I ask. I don't know how many people are watching. How many people are watching right now? And all the people that are going to watch this. About 100 people. Okay. And all the people that are going to watch this on real replay. Oh, you're going to put me front and center? Great. Yeah, front and center. So I I understand that I ruffled a bunch of feathers. And I, I, I get that. You know, we've had 90 years of contesting. And it's going to be... It's going to hurt. You know, it's like, you know, I took Christmas away from your grandkid. I understand but don't uh, attack me personally. Attack the, the the concepts and what can and cannot be done. I mean, it's it's this whole thing of of attacking me personally and telling me that I I I'm not a contester and I don't know how ham radio works and I'm a bad person and I'm a clown and whatnot. This has nothing to do with me. I'm just advocating for change and and shooting these ideas. The problem is these ideas have been in people's brains for years, but nobody has ever said anything because they're, they're afraid to be beaten down. So if I become the poster child for change in, in, in contesting, so be it. But go and, and, and talk about change on about the subject. Don't make it about Kyle, make it about contesting, you know, do, do the things and, and have the opinions about contesting, not about Kyle, because this is not about me. This is about growing the hobby and growing contesting and talk about that. Don't talk about me. So I just wanted to say that. Very well said. All right. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, guys, for watching. Keep the discussion going in the comments below and also in the Radio Sport Discord. I'll put a link in the uh, comments below too for those who are watching on replay who want to join and uh, and continue that. So until next time, until the next time we destroy something in ham radio, we'll see you later. <laughs>